Okay, it looks like it finally arrived. And, um, let's see what this is. That's interesting. Oh, okay, I think it's these oscillator boards. Um, looks like they come pre-assembled. Wow. I don't even have to assemble these. So these use the uh, 8038 chip. I believe that's what they're called. Right. I order some of these here. Oh, uh, yeah, 8038. 8038 chip. Okay, so this uses that particular chip. I ordered some spares because I burnt some of them out. And some of the other ones I ordered were a kit. I think these were not too expensive. And it looks like they come pre-assembled with all the pots in place. Look at that. That's very cool. Don't have to do any soldering. And it comes with some jumpers, too. Although I thought I ordered a bunch of them. Let me, let me see what else is in here. So I was expecting a kit that I had to stick together and solder. Oh, yep. Yeah. Yeah, got a bunch of them in here. So we'll have to test those guys out and see how well these oscillators work. Although I, I like the oscillators. See how that uh, circuit board works, I guess. Okay, should be interesting. Okay, so I like the idea of these things. Look at this. These are actually cheaper than those other kits that I got. Um, well, signal generator kits. Uh, um, I guess I have one on this device down here. And uh, they use the 8038 chip, uh, signal generator on a chip. And uh, I bought some of those chips because I blew out some of my chips. And oh, let's just open this guy up. I like this guy because he's actually cheaper. This guy was cheaper. Look at this. He comes with all these ju jumpers and everything. And it's already assembled. You don't even have to. You, know, you don't even have to spend your time soldering. Look at this. Let's take all these guys out. They are cheap. And should be working, right? And it comes with these little jumpers that I use with my Arduino projects. Very cool, huh? I think I might, um, on my projects I've been removing, I'm not sure which, which, um, I'm going to assume it's this one because that's the position that the other one was on the other circuit board, but these could be wired differently. One of them controls the frequency, and I, uh, would like to, you know, put wires on that one and run it out to, uh, the output you know, the outside of the box or something, so I can put a real, real potentiometer or something like this on it, you know, and so let me test this out, and I'll see which of these controls the frequency and which controls other things, and um, let's see, it looks like here's the power, VCC, and what have you, and so I might hook up some wires to that. The other one had a nice little, um, uh, plug so I could just plug it in the computer but looks like this one I'm gonna to have to do something else with it of course there's there's no directions with this right none of these things come with directions so uh, three output pins looks very similar to the other circuit except for it's cheaper and it is already soldered up look at that less work I may have to unsolder one of these potentiometers and replace it but that's still a lot less work than um, soldering all these parts in from scratch. Especially if this is what got surface mounts and stuff. Very nice. Okay. We'll see how this operates. Actually, you know, well, I got this right here. Maybe I will um, just hook up these jumpers here. Okay. Because, um,. I don't need two hands to do this, I guess. Oh, it's a lot nicer to hook up your scope to uh, flying leads than it is to try to get your clips onto those little pins down there without shorting something out. So let's get that hooked up. And I think we'll use our... Oh, come on our handy dandy little touch screen scope. I one of the reasons why I'm still using this is I just haven't burnt it out yet. 
So um, let's get some place where there's no reflection. Okay, and let's get some power to this guy. I'm going to have to hook some wires to that. Okay. Should be interesting. Okay, I'm being lazy today. I just ripped off a couple of pieces of solder, and I think I will stick them in here to make the connections. And uh, let's see, we got a little screwdriver here to open these things up. Just get this done quickly. Come on. And clamp that guy down. And then we'll have two pieces of solder to clip onto. It's not a permanent solution, but it will be a fast solution. And sometimes fast is good. Okay, so we have our signal generator hooked up to 12 volt battery, motorcycle battery. And I had to fiddle with it a little bit. It looks like I can get an output between two of the pins. It looks like it's small. Let me uh, change the amplitude on this. Make this like, uh, I don't know, one volt per division. Okay, looks like we're getting some kind of output, and we'll try diddling with these uh, different potentiometers here. Let me get this, we have a little screwdriver here. We've got to get it on the... Okay, so I'm changing this one right here, and I'm not seeing what it's doing really. Let me, let me turn up the frequency response. Uh, we'll make this go faster. Okay. Looks like a sine wave coming out of it. Okay, and I couldn't tell what this potentiometer is doing. Let me, let me try a different one. So the first one I tried was in position here, where that was a, where the frequency one was on the other kit so it looks like that is not the frequency one okay so this I think is some kind of offset because when I change it too much it, it goes up to the top or hits the rail on the top and uh, probably if I twill it too much the other way it will hit the rail on the bottom that's my guess so this is some kind of offset over here oh wait did that change the frequency oh it looks like it's changing the frequency okay so it looks like this this potentiometer in this position back here is the frequency one. Okay. It looks like the frequency is much lower now. So I guess it didn't hit the rail, it just went off scale on frequency. See when I twiddle that, the frequency is going up. Okay. And I twiddle it some more back the other way and it goes down. So I suspect on one of these was like um, like a duty factor, and it kind of skews the sine wave, so maybe this is the duty factor one. Okay, yeah. That seems to be skewing the duty factor. Okay. Okay, so this one is the duty, duty cycle. This one is the frequency on this one. Let's check out what this potentiometer does. Hmm. Oh, I'm twiddling it and it is I don't know what it's doing Okay, so I don't know what that one does. Doesn't seem to be doing too much. Let's try this next potentiometer. Okay, it looks like this one is the offset. Okay. So this one, this one down here seems to 
shift the offset up and down. Okay. And I'm not sure quite what this one is doing either. Looks like it's changing the shape of the sine wave. And I suspect that um, probably this jumper over here it controls a sine or sine wave or square wave or triangle wave. And this is probably the frequency range. And notice we're at 0.1 milliseconds. So that would be the corresponding frequency of that. Okay. Let me try changing the uh, jumper for the uh, waveform and see if we can get a square wave. Okay, so I changed the jumper to the middle one here, and it looks like that one is now a triangle wave. And of course, I'm really interested in square wave, so maybe some of these potentiometers are, would be more apparent what they're doing with a square wave. So let me shut this guy down again, and we'll try to shift the jumper onto the top setting and get a square wave, hopefully. Okay, here we go. So I have the jumper on the top position there and it is definitely a square wave very nice huh so um and of course the duty cycle the the, the wave period is uh 2.2 .2 milliseconds okay so that would be um let's see one millisecond would be one kilohertz so it'd be like about this about 10 kilohertz setting here i guess just doing the math off the top of my head. Okay, so looks like uh, this this uh, re, uh, potentiometer, this one in the back here, seems to be related to the amplitude. Because when I start twiddling it, here, let's take a look here. See, the amplitude is going up. that the amplitude is going off scale I might have to change the uh, settings to uh, like two volts per division I guess okay let's see if I can get that screwdriver back on that screw okay there we go. Okay, I think we're maxed out now. So, <clears throat> looks like that is about two, four, maybe six volts. Okay, so again, this potentiometer is the amplitude here. And I believe this is an offset or it sets the rail up higher, so it looks like I'm able to increase the amplitude even more by twiddling with this one. So maybe one's offset and one's amplitude, and I'm just out of range in one of them. So it looks like I'm able to go up to uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. We should be able to get to 10. Yeah, okay, so yeah, this, this one right here is offset, this one in the back. And so the offset was shifted way down toward one of the rails. So that's why we weren't getting the full amplitude so I was able to shift the offset up higher it looks like we're getting about 12 volts peak to peak on this guy now okay and uh, if I remember correctly I think this one was duty cycle so let's try totaling with that and it looks like yes we are changing the duty cycle of course I would like about a 50 percent duty cycle so let me Let's let's twiddle it all the way and see what kind of duty cycle we can get. Okay, so very narrow duty cycle there. And again, that's that first potentiometer here. Let me let me set it back close to fifty percent. Okay, scope went out again. Okay, so again, this is about ten kilohertz, and this is the uh, center jumper setting on here. So let me let me just kind of change those jumpers down there and see what kind of frequency re range we got on this uh, device. Okay. Okay. So I brought the jumper up one position 
and uh, this is 10 microsecond settings, so it's 10 times faster. So this is about 100 kilohertz uh, scale. Okay. And we'll go up the next jumper setting and see what that goes up to. Okay, it looks like this one's not quite a factor of 10. Let's go 10 microsecond. We'll go 1 microsecond. Okay, so there is... Uh, I'll have to calculate that, but it looks like it is probably... Uh, probably like 500 kilohertz or something like that, close to a megahertz. L let me do the calculations. I'll see how fast this is going. Okay, I'm just twiddling the frequency up a little bit, and it looks like that is uh, a duty of about two microseconds, right? One, two, so that's a half a megahertz or 500 kilohertz, kind of toward the upper range. So we'll say 500 kilohertz for the upper range of what this uh, oscillator can do. Okay. Very interesting, huh? And we'll check out the next two lower settings and see what kind of frequencies we get out of that. Okay, so now this is a 10 millisecond setting. And so I have it tuned up. Actually, see, it actually has a pretty broad range of tuning when I change the frequencies. But, um, let's see, we can go way up higher than that and for each jumper setting, way down lower. But, so this, this is about 100 hertz right here. And I will move the jumper down to the lowest setting and see what kind of low frequencies we can get out of this oscillator. Okay. Okay, it does look like you can get um, this on the lowest jumper setting, the farthest right one there. It's a little bit flaky toward the bottom cutoff when you start hitting that range there, as I showed in some of my other videos, but it looks like frequencies on the order of hertz are possible. And once you go past the, the limit, it stops oscillating. So you don't want to hit that limit. Okay, so there, we go down too low, because this is on the one second time scale. Yeah, it either stops oscillating or it takes a very long time, I'm not sure. Okay. Oh, scope shut off. Anyway, very neat uh, circuit board. Uh, you know, I like the fact that you can set the jumpers onto square waves. Some of the other ones, you had to push buttons and stuff to set it up. I, I want something that you can hardwire to stick in the projects. And um, I may have to remove, you know, one of these potentiometers and hook wires into it. It comes all soldered up and working. And it has a frequency uh, on the order of uh, hertz to uh, about 500 kilohertz. And so, very nice circuit. Been using this probably in future projects. And anyway, this is uh, Dr. James. Thanks for watching.